you had really cancer? At that at that time, we think it was just the the precancer um, at that point. But then, um, about four years later, um, it I ended up. How do I even go about that? I'm sorry. Hello everybody, it's Jamie Hughes and welcome to another video. Today we're looking at a lady that decided a great way to get some attention would be to pretend to have cancer. And you know what, I don't think it's worth wasting any time on this one. We're just gonna go ahead and dive straight into what Dr. Phil does here, okay? So uh, let's watch. So you've had some health issues? Yes, I've had, yes, I've had some health issues in the past. What, what happened? What were your health issues? Um, I had um, precancerous cells um, cervical um, uh, when we so already you can see this is just a complete train wreck she's treating this like she's in a movie and she's gonna get to have multiple takes here to uh, get her lines straight you know the, the lines that she rehearsed for her big fat cancer lie well you're definitely getting lots of takes but nobody said they were gonna take it out of the show in fact they leave every single mess up here in and it's great you had really cancer? At that, at that time, we think it was just the the precancer um, at that point. But then, um, about four years later. Oh yeah, they thought it was the precancer. You know, the thing that comes before cancer. Uh, you know, not cancer. Is is that what you mean when you say precancer? So basically, what you're saying here is, uh, well, um. What we were thinking is that I didn't have anything and I just um, wanted some attention because I feel super special. Um, it, I ended up, how do I even go about that? I'm sorry. <sighs> Several years later, it was told to me that the cells had developed into cancer. It really says a lot about the kind of person that you are if you're willing to uh, do something like this for a little bit of clout. It kind of goes without saying that you're automatically a terrible person for doing this. And so we had to do more procedures and treatment um, that time. And at that time I, I did lose my hair and it was a very scary, emotional, time in my life. I cannot wait to see what Dr. Phil has to say about this lady. Like, does she actually think that we're this stupid that we can't tell that she's just straight up lying to our faces? It feels like she just took a bunch of words that she heard about doctors in her life and just started randomly putting them in sentences she was saying to make it sound like it's real. But it's so obvious that it's a big fat smelly lie that like we all, you would have to be, I don't even know what you would have to be to not, not see it because it's so freaking blaringly obvious that she is not telling the truth. But you didn't lose your hair, you shaved your head. Well, I shaved, I shaved my head so I wouldn't have the big clumps of hair falling out. Well, you said you lost your hair, but you didn't, you, you shaved your head. In the beginning, I shaved my head to where my hair was very short, yes. In the beginning, I shaved my head so that everyone would think that I had cancer because I'm just a special snowflake that everyone needs to see right now. I honestly think it's hilarious how she's quite literally tap dancing around Dr. Phil's questions with her little uh, rephrasing of the words so that she can feel better about how she's saying what she's saying. Like, how can I make myself feel better and be able to sleep at night while lying about cancer. I guess if I say it without saying it, then I don't really say it now, do I? No, actually, you're saying it, and it's pretty horrible, okay? And we asked you about this this morning, and you, you put our producer on the phone uh, with a nurse from the Christus Trinity Mother Francis Hospital in, in your hometown, right? Yes. Sharon Hodges. Yes who's a nurse there. Oh yeah, Dr. Phil, let's see how deep this shit goes. Was she involved in your treatment? Yes, I, I, know, I knew her from having visits there. So when you had your surgery and your chemo and your radiation, she treated you? Well, she was one of the nurses there. 
And, and so the producer talked to her um, and... Again with the dodging of the questions, like she answers it with yes, but then comes back right around with, yeah, um, she's one of the nurses at the hospital, so yeah, that's what she is. That's what you asked, right? You wanted to know if she was a nurse, right? That's what she is. No, we wanted to know if she treated you for cancer. Oh yes, of course she's a nurse. Duh, I mean, you heard her, right? She's got all the qualifications of being a nurse and she was definitely at the hospital. She straight up sounds like a politician, but like who is really bad at lying and makes it obvious that they're lying. She told the producer that you went through cancer treatments several months of chemo in 2012 and confirmed ovarian cancer. We asked for Sharon's work email so we can also get an email confirmation and she wouldn't do that she said she was worried that she would get in trouble that's so odd now why would a nurse do that mm -hmm. i called and they had told me i needed to sign you know records release and mm -hmm. things so i don't know if well we had one more question for her so we called back to that hospital and asked for sharon hodges okay and they said there's no Sharon Hodges that works there. <laughs> oh, wow, the lies run deep, don't they? I wonder if she's actually ever going to admit it. Like, is she just going to get exposed here on TV and never admit to it, ever? She thinks she's taking this to the grave, but everybody knows about it. Like, it's not a secret anymore. You might as well just let it out of your system, girl. It'll make you feel better. You look miserable. But you know what? She does deserve to feel miserable because you don't sit there and lie about having cancer, all right? That's just fucked up. Who is Jenny? It's her best friend. One of my friends. Because when you called Sharon Hodges on your cell phone, mm -hmm. the name Jenny came up in the screen. No, well, yeah, because I've known, I know Sharon. That's why I was telling the producer. Oh my God, shut up. Would you have Sharon in your cell phone under Jenny? No. I called Jenny's phone. I said, is this, is this Sharon? She said, no, this, she said, this is Jenny Carey. I was like, oh, I need to talk to Sharon. Why would Sharon be with Jenny? Because we were all friends. Oh, yeah, because, you know, all friends are just always together, attached at the hip, you know? Like, if I ever want to get a hold of any of my friends, there's no point in saving all of their numbers. Just one of them's fine, and then I can call that person and be like, Hey, can you get me with Jeffrey? I know he's always attached to you, so why don't we go ahead and talk? You know what, in fact, I've got a question for the whole group, so go ahead and just conference them all in, okay? Put yourself on speaker. Does that not make sense? No. Not at all. <laughs> okay. The, the truth is, there's no Sharon Hodges that works at that hospital. She doesn't exist. The hospital has no reason to lie about that. But uh, neither do I. I did have to go through treatment. No, you didn't. Mm -hmm. I did have to go through chemo and radiation. So when you put our producer on the phone this morning speaking to Sharon Hodges, they were actually speaking to Jenny? No, that still wasn't Jenny. Who, who was it? Her name is Sharon. What was she doing at Jenny's house? <laughs> they are neighbors now. Please stop. I know it seems so coincidental. I'm just hoping you'll clear it up for me so I can understand. Well, I'm kind of confused at the same time, so I don't really know how I can clear things up for you. Okay, I I've had enough of this lady. Just look, don't lie about any medical anything, okay? If you've got a medical thing for real, then I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry that you had to see this lady lie about it when you actually have to go through it. So yeah, that's the takeaway from the video. It's pretty obvious here. Do not do this at all, ever. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I, I really appreciate you for watching this far in the video, and if you'd like to be a part of the end of the video club, then why don't you tell me a story about somebody in your life that told a ridiculous lie that you actually witnessed and they got caught in everything for it. So yeah, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a good rest of the day. I hope you stay happy and healthy and I will see you in the next video. Peace.